Welcome back to Jero Dynamics. Okay, so I wanted to do a kind of a continuation, kind of a new split off into an adjacent topic of the situation going on in Texas. Uh, I know it's kind of fallen out of the headlines a little bit, but it's still something that's going on right now. Basically, the Texas government and the federal government are arguing over who gets to um, have control over the border. Um, and basically, the argument should be cut and dry. It should be the federal government has control over the federal uh, border between Mexico and the United States, which also happens to be Texas's border with Mexico. Um, the problem is, is that the United States has abdicated their responsibility as far as defending the border and is more, you know, encouraging people to come across the border. Um, and so the Texas government has taken it upon themselves to start putting up uh, defensive structures and to try to prevent people from crossing the border illegally. Um, and the federal government has argued that they should not be able to do that. Um, and then there was a, uh, there was a court case that Texas won where they were able to uh, do it. Uh, or prevent the federal government from taking down their barricades. That's I think that's the specific aspects of the uh, case. And then the Supreme Court overruled that, saying that the, the um, U.S. government could come in and take down the barricades. Um, and so Texas has said, you know, you're going to have to take us to court again to make it so that we can't put up the barricades. So you can come in and take down the barricades, but we can put them up. Um, and so it's just kind of a back and forth, like bickering type thing, um, with huge implications because, uh, who gets to say, you know, who controls the country when there's so, or the border when so many people are coming across the border? Well, the federal government, my dog's down here. I accidentally hit him with my foot. Let me, let me comfort him a little bit. <laughs> All right. So the, uh, yes. And now he's coming up. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Bruce, say hi. Say hi. <laughs> yes, he is throwing the uh, um, the topic off. He does not care about the Texas border um, or what I was going to talk about. And he's uh, he's good for the video because he's a cute dog. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, Bruce. That's 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 not what we're doing today. Okay, go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good boy. Good boy. Go lay down. All right. Uh, I figured that was a fine little interjection. I'm sure you guys love cute dogs. Anyways, <laughs> um, so the uh, the state of Texas and the federal government are kind of bickering about this. Um, what I'd like to talk about is how it has turned into an argument about civil war, basically the you know states versus the federal government. Um, and that's not exactly what's being um, pushed for. Uh, the, the state is saying, the Texas, state of Texas is saying that uh, there is an invasion going on. Um, the United States government is not defending the border. And so it is constitutionally allowed for the state to defend the border when the government is not protecting the border against an invasion. That's the argument. We'll see how that all plays out, but that's where we are. Um, and so the state is saying they will defend their right to defend the border. Um, and then other states are getting involved and saying they side with Texas. So this, you know, it kind of does seem like a group of states versus the federal government. Well, you know, so some people are saying that that's a call for civil war. I don't think that it is. Um, you can disagree. That's fine. Uh, it's not a call for civil war. It's a disagreement between the states and the federal government um, on the, um, you know, the powers of the states versus the power of the federal government. Um, sending in militias to defend the border is not sending in a militia to uh, fight the federal government. It's sending in militias to help Texas defend the border. So if it turned into the militias fighting back against the United States um, army, then yeah, I, I would say it's, you know, you're looking more at something closer to a civil war in that situation. But that's not what anybody's arguing for. That's just what the left is accusing Texas of doing, right? And these other states and the other state militias of doing. It's not what they're arguing for, though. They're saying they want to help Texas defend the border, not 
fight the U.S. government. Okay, so let's let's say that we do have this disagreement, right? And we have some people saying that this is a call for civil war and other people um, saying that it's not. But we have this huge divide. That's, that's really what I want to talk about in this video. There's this huge divide between in the country between um, what most people call left versus right, um, you know, and oftentimes use political parties as, as part of the argument, Republican versus Democrat, that sort of thing. And it's such the, the gap is dividing, not so much on the policy, but on the um, just the, the argument you know, the, the disagreement, the uh, inability to cooperate, the inability to even associate with people that might be different from you, um, uh, you know, and trying to shut down businesses and close, uh, cancel people online and, you know, all this different stuff, right? And it's, so it's becoming this huge uh, divide in the country. And it's weird because the, the parties really aren't that different from each other. But that's, you know, that's not really what people are arguing about. People are just, it's us versus them. It's our team versus their team. It's like a football game, you know. People were really passionate about the San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Even though the San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs are pretty much exactly the same. They're just two different teams, right? It's not like one of them believes this weird thing and this other one believes this weird thing. No, they're just two football teams that want to win, right? And so the fan bases of each team have picked them for whatever reasons they picked them. Oftentimes it's um, geographical. Um, sometimes, like my myself, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I've lived in California most of my life. I lived in Texas for a little bit. Um, lived in California most of my life, but I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan because my grandfather was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. It's that simple. He he watched the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like that. I picked up the team. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Um, it's not because, you know, I believe in the culture of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's not because I believe that they believe this thing that I want to believe in, it, you know. So people just root for a team for whatever reason. They like the colors of the team. They like the mascot of the team. They've picked a team and they root for it and they want that team to win and they're very passionate about that. For, that's just the way human beings are. We get passionate about tribalism for whatever reason. And so that's what's happened. The Republicans and Democrats really aren't that different when you like really get down to it, right? Um, but people have a passionate side to take. And so we have this huge divide in the country. And so one of the issues that I find most interesting and I'm actually kind of passionate about is the concept of a civil separation, a national divorce, whatever you want to call it. The, uh, the ability for the nation to decide that we can go our separate ways. Um, this isn't a civil war, and that's why I'm talking about it now, because I think that the differences between Texas and, say, New York, right, um, are just so great. The, the, the divide is so great that they can say, you know what, we don't need to be in a country with the other, the other side. You know, we are, we believe in things so differently, but we have a fundamental disagreement about the Constitution of the United States, and we can go our separate ways. And it is possible, okay? Um, you can't unilaterally do this. We've, we've, already seen how that plays out with the, the actual civil war, the United States Civil War um, that had, you know, a lot to do with slavery. Um, a lot. Not all of it was about slavery. So when people say, well, the civil war wasn't about slavery. No, it was about slavery. Um, there were other aspects in there too, but slavery was the big issue. Okay. So, um, you know, the South just said, you know what? We're not part of the union anymore. We're leaving. We're out of here. Um, and uh, you can kick rocks. And it caused a war because the union was like, no, you can't do that. And we're not going to let you do that. And we're going to fight you to keep you from doing that. Um, but let's take a step back. Unilaterally, the South left, right? Well, what if the North was like, let them go, right? Let them leave. We don't need them, okay? 
there wouldn't have been a civil war and we would have divided the country into two countries. Why? Because at that point, it's not unilateral. Yes, the South initiated it, they left, but the North was like, I don't care, let them go. And there would have been no war, the country would have split in two, the United States Constitution would have been left in place in the North, the South would have created their Confederate states, and there would have been two different countries, right? All would have been completely legal, um, it just would have happened, right? In, in most cases, it can't just happen that way, though. You, you would have to have a discussion, you would have to have um, votes, you would have to have um, a path forward. Um, and that's where the Constitution comes into play, because the Constitution actually kind of allows for this. Um, not even kind of, it does allow for this. It, that's not what it was put in place for, but it does allow for this. So the United States Constitution allows you to amend the Constitution. There's two different ways you can do that. You, the, uh, the Congress can do it by huge majorities that, you know, almost never can happen. So that's why it doesn't get amended very often. Um, or the states can do it through a convention of the states. There's two different ways it can happen. It's only happened by uh, um, the Congress passing it. So, you know, take that, you know, for what it is. But it could happen by a convention of states. So you would go in. You would say there we're going to create this amendment to the Constitution. This amendment to the Constitution creates two separate countries. Right. And, the you know, the country that uh, that keeps the Constitution. Now, the under, other country is probably going to have something similar to the Constitution, but I, I, I strongly believe this. The left is not a fan of the Constitution as it is, and I think they would rewrite it in a lot of different ways. Uh, the right, not so much. Um, you know, states like Texas would pretty much retain the Constitution as it is, um, maybe revert some of the changes that have happened that are not uh, exactly liberty friendly, friendly, not exactly um, states rights friendly, you know, get some, uh, get some adjustments to kind of revert it back more to what it was at its, at its uh, foundation. But that's what could happen. You could go in and you could pass this. But the thing is, is you can't just have it be a one line, uh, the United States is divided into that it wouldn't work because, well, okay, well, what's the details of that? And so, you know, what you would need to find out is how you divide the country. Um, who wants the country to get divided? That would be the first thing is like, we've got this huge divide and usually it's the right talking about dividing the country. Um, you know, you'll see it from the left periodically, but mostly they're just like attacking the right for wanting to separate the country. Um, but, um, but there's a lot of issues. Let's take abortion, uh, for instance. The uh, left would love to see abortion become the law of the land, that no state could, uh, could have a law that limits abortion, right? Um, and the right would love for the law of the land to be that no state could create, um, could allow abortion. Um, you know, they would... Well, not all the right. Some of the right thinks that it still should be a state issue. But anyways, you get you get my point. They they have two different ideas about what should happen with abortion. So, if both sides agree that we cannot agree on this issue, there's there's just no way to agree on this issue. Let's uh, let's just go our separate ways. You know, maybe the left could agree with that. Maybe they could say, hey, you know what? If we let all of these states, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit here, but if we let all of these, these people that we disagree with leave the country, then we could have our position that, uh, that abortion is legal in, you know, in all states. I mean, the, there'd be less states, but, but, uh, but yeah, that would be the, the, it would be the law of the land if you let all the people who disagree with you leave. And that is on a lot of issues. Um, you know, they, they want to have a wealth tax, right? They want to have, um, um, they want to have whatever the issue happens to be. I'm, I, sh I should have prepared like a list of issues to talk about here, but we don't want to go too far into the weeds. Basically, the left has issues and the right has issues and they can't agree on these issues. 
And so if we go our separate ways, then the left could get its way and the right could get its way. It would just be two separate countries. And we could agree on this, right? That this is the best path forward. Um, and then you have to decide how to separate the country. Um, so separating the country involves an agreement that would require a large portion agreeing to do this. So that's where it's hard. You know, it's not easy, um, but you have to agree to do it. Otherwise, there would be war and we don't want war. We want this to be a peaceful, as peaceful as possible. We, we kind of hate each other at this point, but we want it to be peaceful in the division. We don't want an actual war. We disagree. We yell. We argue. We, you know, hate is, is a strong word, but it's a lot of people feel that way. Um, you want to move forward uh and as two separate nations so that you without the use of war okay and so you have to decide how to divide the country um a lot of people talk about states you know texas would secede that's not really what would happen because you would be agreeing to divide the country but so this country has these states and these countries have these states and then you would just go your separate ways right well there's a lot of problems with that um, it's a, it is one of the solutions to this dividing up the country, um, but there are a lot of problems with that. One, um, not everybody in the state will agree, right? So let's say we divided it up by states, but there's huge portions of California. I live in California. Huge portions of California that would not want to be a part of the of the. <laughs> the liberal states of America, we'll, we'll say that. Liberal states of America, conservative states of America, that's not really what would happen, but let's just, let's just use that to dumb it down a little bit here, make it simple to talk about. The liberal states of America, well, the Central Valley of California and the Northern portion of California would be super upset about being part of the liberal states of America, right? And then you have Texas, right? Well, this one would be a lot harder, but let's just talk about it. You, you have Austin, you have Houston, um, not so much Dallas, but Dallas to a certain degree, the big cities, right? So Austin and Houston would say, hey, uh, we don't wanna be a part of the conservative states of America, um, you know, so what do we do, right? So instead of states, we could maybe even like divide it up smaller into smaller pieces, uh, maybe counties, maybe we can do it voting districts um, and just kind of like have a national vote, one, to see, do the majority of people agree with this? Do the majority of people, and not simple majority, 50-50, like 51%, um, for, you know, for a constitutional amendment to pass, it needs to be something like 75%, you know, that whatever the, that portion, I'm trying to remember, I think it is three quarters of states need to agree or three quarters of um uh, representatives need to agree to pass a constitutional amendment. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But anyways, uh, it's a large portion. It's not just a simple majority, right? So, um, you know, we go in, we have a vote um, nationwide. And if that threshold is crossed, then we will want to divide the country, right? And we can do it through a constitutional amendment. Talked about that. Um, and then you take a look at the demographics. And you, you can kind of see this in presidential elections, you know, Trump lost the election. He lost the last election. You can talk about fraud. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, in the end, the result of the election was Trump lost, right? Um, and, uh, um, and I do, I have opinions about, you know, fraud and how much fraud happened and whether there was enough fraud to have flipped the election. My take, just kind of throw this out there. My take is the election was stolen before it even happened by the government censoring, um, using censorship tactics through big media, big tech media and stuff like that. That's my ideas. Um, but either way, it wasn't like stolen, stolen. It was stolen as in, you know, using tactics that were probably unconstitutional if you're, if you're looking at censorship as, as, a, as an issue. But either way, the, so he lost, right? But if you look at the demographics of the country, the majority of counties around the United States, the vast majority of counties voted red, right? They voted for Trump. Um, the reason why Trump lost, the pop, let's talk about the popular vote. The reason why Trump loses the popular vote is because 
the big cities vote for voted for Biden, right? And the majority of our population is in big cities. And so you you can see it on the map. There's, you know, these spots where there is blue, 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 but it's the majority of the state the United States of America is red. Right? And so you take a look at that and you say, well, okay, so all of these counties are voting to leave uh, to you know to separate right based on this you, so you'd want to say you know are you voting to leave the United States and then if you are voting to leave the United States are you voting or sorry not leave the United States are you voting for the United States to, to be divided to be separated into two countries if you are voting well it might not even be just two countries but anyways are you are you voting in favor of breaking up the United States of America? And then if you are, what country do you want to be a part of? You know, um, that sort of thing. And then you can kind of take a look at the counties. And it's not going to be perfect, but you can say, okay, we can form borders based on the counties that want to remain and the counties that don't want to remain. The problem is, is you can't connect. <laughs> you, you're going to have to do some geographical connecting of the countries. Um, you know, that's why I said it could possibly be more than two countries. But in, you know, the the main thing is you probably need to figure out a way to connect this country, right? And then connect this country. And so that's kind of what you're looking at um, is taking into consideration the counties that want to separate and then taking into consideration the counties that don't want to separate um, or I keep getting that mixed up. Basically, which counties want to go to the liberal states of America and which counties want to go to the conservative states of America. Let's just say that. Okay, so um, and then you figure out a, a commission of some sort that's going to set up these these borders um, that you know can be agreed upon and then you have a two different countries or three or whatever it ends up being separated out into um, to the different uh, populations right so then even then so let's say you divided it by state it'd be even worse. But let's say you divided it that way. You would still have a situation where some people who want to be a part of the conservative states of America are in the liberal states of America, and some people who want to be part of the liberal states of America are in the conservative states of America. And so you have a situation where some people are kind of like not where they want to be, but they, you know, but do they want to move? And that's the question, is um, there should be some uh, leeway where you're allowed to have a free flow of citizens uh, between the countries, um, <clears throat> and uh, people are allowed to move from one country to the other country and become citizens of that country um, moving forward. Uh, you, you should have that sort of thing, and maybe even some sort of financial assistance um, to, uh, to facilitate this. <clears throat> which is not something that, you know, a conservative states of America would usually be in support of. But in this situation, getting, you know, doing something so huge as dividing the country, allowing people to leave, allowing people to come um, and, you know, create your own new country, you may want to do some sort of financial assistance to try to make that possible, right? Set up, you know, living, uh, living areas where people who are traveling from, say, the Central Valley of California, say, we divided it by states, and we wanted to go and move to the conservative um, states of America because the Central Valley suit is pretty conservative, but we're stuck here in the liberal states of America. Can we move? Um, yes, let's move. And here's some financial assistance for us to move, right? That sort of thing. So you have to figure out how to at least give the people the right to transfer from one country to another. And then in the end, you have two separate countries with two distinct populations that have um, different values and different uh, goals moving forward. And this could be done. You could divide up resources, you could divide up the border, you could divide up the military, you could divide up all of these things and you can separate and go, go about it. It's super complicated. I'm not saying it's easy, but this is something that could be done. Um, and as we see the divide between pe the people of this country grow and grow and become more intense and more passionate, um, this might be something we need to do before we end up in the worst case scenario, which is an actual war, a civil war, 
Okay, so it's something to consider to try to avoid a civil war. Not a, it's not causing a civil war. It's not, you know, it's not supporting a civil war. It would be in, um, it would be instead of a civil war. So this is kind of a concept that we we should be having more of a national discussion about. We should have. Uh, you know, debates and we should have um, different ideas thrown around on how it could be accomplished and the pros and the cons and what we could do moving forward. Uh, but it's not, and and I think that it should be, and that's a big part of what I all have always wanted my channel to be is talking about that sort of thing. Um, so I will, and I'll make multiple videos about it and my thoughts on the plans moving forward and what we could do. I think it'd be a great thing to do. Um, as far as the details of it, yeah, yeah, that's that's for, for other videos. But basically, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you think that, um, not that it can be done, because it would be very hard. And I, I agree with you that it would be very hard to do. So can it be done? Maybe not. But should it be done? Could it be done? How would it be done? Those are the types of things that I'd like to talk about. So if you have a comment about that, leave that down below and let's have a discussion. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good day.